Yeah, good night of Shabbos. And the, it sounds like a very interesting thing. Pasha Shaftim. Shaftim Vishaitim Titim Lucha Bechol Shavecha. Right? It sounds like a police state. Right? You can't do anything. You got Shaitim, Shaitim, right? right? You know? The idea is to teach you Mishpat Sedek. That's the point. You have to show me Mishpat Sedek. That's the purpose. The first of those two points. You know, when the person comes, wherever he goes, a kid goes to school, goes to camp, they tell them rules. When you know rules, what's the, what's the object? How to break the rules, right? And get what you want. In the tailor, that becomes a noble bishus at tailor. We're not out to break the rules and get what I want, when I want, what I want. You want know what God wants. And therefore, there's a way of, of approaching it. Now, you can have Mishpat Tzedek, you can have not Mishpat Tzedek. I'll show you a basic one that's now in, in, in going on in the world. Um, San Francisco just, just got the guy out. I think the other, the other cities can't do that. But uh, Manhattan has it, Brooklyn has it. They have a DA that tells the people that don't, tells the cops or, they, the, or uh, the, the prosecutors, the DAs, don't prosecute crimes of stealing. No, it's, stealing is not a crime. Why is stealing not a crime? It's, it's, this, uh, it's a re... Uh, what do you call it, of assets? It's re, uh, redistribution. redistribution of assets. That's all it is. And you had a thousand dollars before, and I took five hundred, so now we both got five hundred. So what are you complaining about? So what's that called, Ganeva? So now it's obviously they have no concept of what's called mine. Okay, Shali. Okay, we have even the point of socialism. Where was the point of uh, the, the, the Ted this week has about the old the Ifume Kibbutzim that made me. one Shaila they, they brought down right away was they had a Shaila Hayy Mekadish and Isha with something that belongs to everybody. And but there was only Shalas, I have no idea what they solved it, I don't know what they did with it, and I don't know what they think about Shadis this Mamish nothing that's theirs. But that's called Amorats by us. Shali, shalcho, shalcho, shali. It sounds very nice. We live in everything else, but there's no concept of mine and yours that there's something wrong. There is something wrong. But it's a, it's a nice way of living. You're not mullet. Okay, you're not mullet. But you don't. You could be a kind man also and say, shali, shali, shaloch, shaloch, shaloch. That's a guy's a chosset. So, like, obviously, when I went out, they're not objecting to you, giving your money away. We we're objecting to, to this concept of the abshad is that it's free, that we do, do whatever we want. It's not just thing as bios. That's the point, okay? So the idea of the shaftim, the shaitrim, we're not addicted to as policemen in that sense. I mean, they will act as policemen. But the idea is more of a guidance type of thing, what's right and what's wrong. And if you actually have a case, you have to go to it. There's nothing you can do about it. But at least it's an honest din. It's not the point of how Mr. Boy can talk, you know, whatever it is there. It's the judge's obligation to hear from the defendants and from the, and from the guy who's money, uh, and from both sides, to hear the case, to hear what he thinks it is. Now, it's not a point of what you're convincing me, whatever it is there. It's his job to do it, and when he feels convinced, that's when he passes the din. And that's what we're interested in. Anyway, but he gives the same thing that we had originally in Pashish, the Vorim, that Lysate Mishpot, Lysate Ponim, Lysikar Sheikhat, Sheikhat, the Abba in the heart. And talking about, Rashi says, even Sheikhat to Paschal the Dynamis. Like, what does that mean? How do you have Sheikhat to Paschal the Dynamis? Like, so, but it's a real reluctance. Guy comes to the Rav and says, I have it in tail with my friend. I'd like you to pass in it. Leave me alone. Well, we'll find a bezin someplace. You know. 
I'm working, I got my own job, and I'll give you $1,000 if you do it. That's Sheikhat. One-sided, giving you a thing, made it worth my while, whatever you want to call it, and I'm willing to do it. That's Sheikhat to Paskin Dinimis. How does it affect you? So I think you're more of a case like this. It's a little I'm not sure, because you're coin. And, uh, and the guy came for the entire before him, bringing him trume and stuff that he has to give him anyway. doesn't have to give him, he give any coin. Uh, but in that respect, he's a coin like anybody else. He's entitled to take it. Right? He's entitled to it. And it says he, he refused the trume. And he also refused to sit on the bezin. And he says afterwards, that as the, 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 he was standing outside and hearing how the dentator was going by, and, and, was, uh, and he was saying, why didn't this guy say this? Why doesn't he say this? Why doesn't he say that? So he sees how it affects even the Rotson to do me not even a favor, because you have to bring it to some coin, and I'm a coin, so what difference does it make to me or not? But it's not yours, you can't keep it. You have to give it away. Enough for P. Kane, I was that affected to the point that I was always looking for schus for this guy that he should win the case. So that's the Avla of Sheikhad even the Paskin the Nemes. Okay, like see it al Bha Shaira Kulait Saits and Isbah Hashem Lakha, what does this guy to do? Is it, these all these things were written on Shlema Melech's uh, steps, the Banira lines. And he had over there that these things, are. what does that mean? He says, you know, you have an actor. You're looking for a guy to portray what should a judge look like, right? He has to look hoshu, he has to look what he called. So we pick out this, this, this guy, right? But this guy doesn't have anything in him. He doesn't know anything. He can't be a judge, he's an actor. You give him the lines, he'll be able to say it. He looks what a judge should look like. That's the point. Otherwise, that my sheva has no sheikhs. I mean, it looks look, it look really silly, right? You really get in a place there where you're doing shritas, you're doing this and that, and you have a thing. Then you go, but all of a sudden, the trees are in plant. That's no pain. But if you're looking for something to represent, to look like something, or something like that, that's what he leaves. So that don't look for a judge by what he looks like. Look for him what he is. That's what he's saying. Yeah. And then it says, Now here we have a shvarik and we have a lot of shvarik item. Rashi says, an Indian, what did he say? Uh, Right? Mizbach Avonim, Adom et Sivilas, yeah, Zu Sonny, Ki Hoysa le Kenanim, the Afa P. Shoysa Huvaloi, the Mayhovis, even though God loved that not savor, the Mayhovis, Achshav Son of Meachish also Susu Elu Hoklum Avidzor. And they don't make him a spare club, he deserves. They don't make him not savor, he deserves. What's he talking about? And how does he know that the God loved it by the others? There's only one case that we know. The case of Yankee Favino. When Yankee Favino got up uh, from the sleep and the dream, and he understood from the dream that everything you do has to be L'Shem Shemayim, right? Not just the point of, of let's say, your yeshiva, so therefore, he didn't go to sleep for 14 years. And we said, it's impossible if you don't sleep for three days. It's, also, it's obviously impossible. So we're talking about, obviously, it means he didn't go to sleep. Okay, he didn't go to sleep. Why? Because I got to learn every single minute of my life. <coughs> but the truth is, if you would sit down and sleep for a couple of hours, you'll have a lot of keiches in your mind to be able to, de- to penetrate the tailor. You don't do it, you don't do it. You don't get it. So I have to use the keach that Benishim gave me, gave me to eat food. 
You eat food, not because food, I enjoy food. I have to eat food because the food is necessary for me to live. You're right. I, but one time, with the food that I'm eating, for me to live, I can enjoy. That's what I make a bracha on, that I should enjoy it. There's no question about it. But I don't eat food just because I enjoy it. I eat food for that, for the, for the other reason, was to keep me alive, to serve a Kodesh Bochum. That's the purpose of it. That's what Yankee Vovino awoke with. And he took a matzeva, and what did he do? He poured oil on it. And he did the same thing again when he was in Mikhaim the Nedel. And he <coughs> said to the Lubanish and the Ferish over there, if I can do it, I'm yours. I'm your I'll be Makabu, you for the course. If I can't do it, I'm not Makabu. Obviously, he went and he was able to do it. He was Makabu, and did this. You saw it for, for us, for all of us, that we're Makhiv to work on it. And that's Elike Yaakov, that we say in Shemanesh. We find inside the Elke Ali Seichem, which is the Teire, Elke Ali Moshe Yitzchuk, or Yaakov, different Yisoydis that we have. And this is Yaakov's Yisoyd. So the Yitzchuk that he was trying to show when you're dealing with Gashmis, facts, where's the fact? That's the lotion of Gashmis, right? Where's the taste? What's the oil for? That's the fat. It makes food taste better. It adds calories to something. It makes something rich. It makes something, that's the thing, not dry. You know, what do you call it? That is the point of Gashmis. And that is the biggest Gashmi that you can have is oil. And in that he says, I put that on a matzeva. A matzeva is atkan. I don't have to grow. For a human being, it's a very bad thing, a matzeva. What Pat Matzeva says is, I'm satisfied with who I am, I don't have to grow. That's not us. By us, we always make a mezbeach. We always believe in growth. We always believe in again and again and again, and always give more. And we, and we, when we I think in, when we, we spoke Paoshis uh, Bullock, he, he, we see that when, when uh, um, Bilom is bringing Kobonis, He's saying, I brought uh, seven comments, and I brought Shavail on each one. <coughs> and all the others together brought only seven Mizbeachs, and they only were marked of one carbon. So what was the Mizbeach for? So obviously Mizbeach was telling you who I am. I'm a person of growth. I'm not a pain. I make something in front of my house, some kind of a, something that's supposed to look nice, and so it depends, is it a one piece or what is a mitzbeach? <coughs> I don't use it, not mak makriv on it. If it's a mitzvah, this is who I am. And that's what it is. There. So therefore, I don't hear we even had this thing, the mayovis. He didn't mention, never liked the mayovis either. And if I don't know what Rashi says, and if I say, as in, I say, if you're dealing with what the Goyim did, they definitely made a mitzbeach also, the same thing like they made a matzeva. So you can't say that there's no there's no such thing. So therefore, it doesn't make any thing. I don't I don't understand. I think simply this was always there in that shot. Yeah. <coughs> the union of the yimotzi b'kib b'chobach et shorecha shesham b'chamesh lo isha isha yeses hara talks about Rabbi Yisora, and you'll find that he calls uh, three times. And the real thing, I think, is why it is three times called Ra? Because he really did three things wrong. He didn't just do one thing wrong. We have the Aftar in the pouches of Masse that he says that it says, Shnaim Roy Sosuri. You did me two or You did be a thing. One, you left me. In other words, you say, I can't do something, so therefore you went away from God. And you took it away, it's over. That's the second thing. Becoming up in Kedus is one thing. That's one Avera. I now take the Kedus I could have spoken, put it on to a Getschke, or to whatever it is, and all of a sudden, I have two Roy. And then the fact itself is an Avera. So therefore, it's three Roy. The way Hashem says. Comes... <coughs> for Shani is is uh, 
Zoki Mamre. And Zoki Mamre is one of the four Avelis, that they, 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 or what he called, they keep for the, for the regal, that everyone should see and, be, and, 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 and see that this is not the way it's supposed to be. Zoki Mamre, and the Dogmoro describes how to become a Zoki Mamre. It's not that easy. So you have to be very persistent. But to understand, it doesn't make a difference how big you are. There's an Indian of discipline. The Gemara's case is against Rabbi Eliezer. And the Rabbi Eliezer was very persistent. He brought in Nisim to prove that he was right. And Rabbi Yeshua counteracted all these Nisim. And, but the Nisim, obviously, you see, it is what the, one, the final one was that the wall of Beis Medes should fall in. That's what Rabbi said. Rabbi Yeshua said, and you stay out of it. And all of a sudden, the wall is stay slanted. You have a slanted wall of Beis Medes. The cover of Yeshua and the cover of Beleza. But the idea is they put him into Cherem. They put him into Cherem because he was a Zoki Mamre. Doesn't mean that they didn't love him. It doesn't mean that they didn't respect his knowledge. You see, at the end, when he finally dies, the Yeshua runs into the cave. He was a man that when he said, Kay so chokhme, he sure bent down and kissed him. He used the great Rebbe. But you can't be a Zokin Mamre. There's a din that goes after the Rebbe. And the persistence, in other words, the good the guy's persistent one way or the other. Yeah, I don't agree with you, I still, still scream. But they said, we decided, that's it, it's over at that point. And that's what we have to remember. In other words, and that's why it's really, for lo yizidinoid, there's only going to be a few people that it's going to affect. It's not going to be everybody in the world. But the, this, the idea of being that stubborn, if you want to call it, that even when the, when the, the din is oiskipaskin, then you're doing it and proving it and trying to prove it. Those things, it's finished, it's done. And that's the thing. Klal Yisrael wants a melech. That's the next thing, right? He says the melech kichol agoyim. There's a reason why you want a melech. Why is the form of government that, that you're picking is to have a melech? Right? Maybe uh, we're living in a, what do we call it, democracy? We don't have democracy. <coughs> in fact, I believe when the founding fathers of America had a ganze machlekes, whether George Washington should be made king or president. The difference is a king is Yerushadikeloche. It also, it's against for life, it's not necessarily Yerusha. Poland had a king and they elected him for life, but as soon as he dies, they elect him king. It doesn't go automatically to his king, to his children. Abba Baya, in most cases, it goes to the children. And uh, the Goyim, how they protect <coughs> themselves as the divine right of, of kings, that you're not allowed to really act against them. They, they, whatever they do is right, and that's it. The divine right of kings. So we may it automatically right. Okay, we don't believe in that either. It's not just think you're automatically right. You have to do what's right. The truth is, though, I mean, we've had bad kings. Malchus Bistovit had bad kings. We had Ochus, we had Menashe. We had bad kings. But... Obviously, the Torah, we pray for Malchus Pistovit, we pray that we've turned that thing. 
What do we see is the benefit of Malchus over, over democracy? I think the simplest answer is I'm guaranteed a position. I'm guaranteed food. Whatever it is, you can tell me. You can tell me you don't need money. Not an issue. You need money to run a government that you need. But you don't need personal money. You want to run a, a, a state dinner with real silver? That's the government needs that. So we'll buy real silver. Right? It's not that I need real silver. I happen to have real silver in the house, so why should I go out and buy stainless steel? I got real silver, so I'll leave it real silver. But it's not a point that I'm buying it for myself. But the person is, but we find, even by, by dictators, that they put away billions of dollars in other countries in order to be able that when they felt that when they die, they want to leave something over for their kids, and the government's not going to let it go to their kids, so we're going to steal from the government, from the state now, in order that my children will have. And that, if you have your children, are going to be kings. You don't need to have anything. You don't have to hide anything for anything. Everything is open. I don't need anything. I think that now the question is, if I'm good or bad, that's another thing. That's like any other thing in the world. But... But the power, the Eitzahore, if you want to put it, that it's me, or that is not necessary, because I am. And therefore, it is not necessary. <coughs> there are ways how to be a Melech, that's good, how to train you to be a Melech. I guess we learn from your Shofat a little bit like that. I believe Hashid uh, Shereb is trained to be like that. That Barabim, you don't smile. Barabim, you talk tough. Rabbi, what do you call? The private, oh, you, know, you give a kiss to the to, to, to the Talmud Chochem, you stand up for him, whatever it is, nothing, Rabbi. Actually, but not, but a but Melech doesn't show softness in public. So they're different, a public uh, big picture or a private picture. Now this not melech is a very interesting thing. It says you're not allowed to put a melech except from someone of yours. The Gemara has a discussion about boy, what's his name? Ben Rochel, who was his name? Mori Bar Rochel. Mori Bar Rochel was this a Giyur's son. He was from a Goy before Isigiyura became a girl and married Rachel. He was, uh, whatever it is, he was a bandit, a guy, and he raped Rachel and he had a kid <coughs> called Mori. And there came a question about marrying at the Kedusha. He's not a Koyan, Shmo was a Koyan. <coughs> he doesn't have Kohuna. But can he be appointed for anything? And he all says yes. In other words, the for, he's called Mikel uh, Vachecha uh, because his mother is Jewish. But if you're a real king, he can't be unless his father is Jewish. The funny thing is, there's no requirement of the mother to be Jewish by a real king. A real king, all you need is the father. That's the palace. So I don't know what the exact, you know, he's telling me a chiddush, the mother is not enough to make you a real king. It can be a king, you know, the definition of a king is anyone has power over you. So the guy who comes and inspects my, my gears line, he has power over me. He can shut me down or not. So therefore, he's a king. So he has no power. He can't be a king unless he's Mikhail <coughs> Vachecha. So that guy, that's enough to be if the mother is a Jew. Right? And what about to be a real king? You need the father to be a Jew. Now, it can't be, obviously, the father married a shiksa, and that, that wouldn't help because that's not called being a Jew. But he can marry the Yudas, and 
is is basna is ben namo, right? So therefore, you're already in Malchus based David. You have a Giudas's son become the king. So all you need is the mother, is the father. But the idea is that she has to be a Jew. Father being a Jew, marrying a shiksa wouldn't help anything. That wouldn't help anything. Okay. Now the Egan of Sus, it's like it's not hard to understand it. We're discussing it in, in Bereshis. If you remember that nowhere in all the gifts that Pari gave, Avimelech gave, anybody gave, nobody gave you horses. They gave you camels, they gave you donkeys, they gave you, but no horses. Why not? Because horses was a specialized weapon that only Egypt had. And that was their, their big mile. I guess I assume that individual horses were, were stepped in, but you'd have Kosus Pari, Rechev, whatever it is, there's the army is having an, a cavalry, which, which is stuff that was done by horses. And um, you have different places, even during the wars of the Middle Ages, where there were heavy one that was war and fought on wars, the wars in England did not have the horses that the Egyptians had. That's called an Arab horse. It's a horse that, those are race horses. They can go very fast. Those are the horses that, that really can catch you. They used to have a big horse that was very tall and very big, a steed they used to call it. And that horse, you couldn't knock him off the horse. That's the point. The horse itself had power. It was like a tank. But if you wanted speed, you didn't have it. So a guy can, can run, his, run, run around him. That's why when they, when they came, the Crusaders didn't have that mila of being able to defeat the, uh, the Arabs because they didn't have the horses that they had, even though they bought horses. But they weren't the type of horse that they could use. They didn't have that speed. And speed and weapon is, is a very good thing. So, in other words, so it's possible that, they, that he'll want a lot of horses. I'm not talking about five horses. And I, think that, I mean, it maybe it is. Maybe I, I'm running the racehorse business and I want to go down and pick down my own horse. I'm going to go back to Mitzrayim. So I'm telling you not to do it. But generally, you're talking about simply I need horses for the army. They have the horses. I have to go to them for the horses. I'm telling you, don't the Abelaisus. Okay, whatever it is, how do we run the army or not, or whatever it is there. Or maybe that school just enough for his cavalry, that's it, but nothing for show, nothing for what he called. They don't have extra horses. Okay. No one had horses. If the Adam didn't have horses, what was the kind of bill for not having a horse? There wasn't a tiny but it meant that it's like no one has a Rolls Royce either, right? But if you have enough money, you got the Rolls Royce. So, Billum, you're, you're the big shot in the world. You're the one that can curse everybody out and this and that. So, where's your Rolls Royce? Tom tells the soil, and it tells you an interesting thing. You have to boil all of it, and what are you going to go? Don't learn from the Goyim. What did the Goyim do? There's not no right, that means that they kill him. That means there's a type of uh, magic in it. There's all these type of things which are chachmas. And uh, according to Ramban, they are the uh, the Eastern Chachmas, of uh, what he called. And in Emerson, and Summer Magic, but again, it's a Chachmas. Shleim HaMelech knew it all because of the Chachmas that he learned 
but the Benjamin gave him so he understood how all these things work, right? And he was able to do all these things. He didn't do it. You're not allowed to do the thing, but then, and now then, and, and it says, and this is all really to know what the future is. And if you go downtown Manhattan, I mean, downtown, I mean, down Wall Street area, where the money, where all the, 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 uh, the stock exchanges are, you'll have somebody see how many seers they are there. Or people with, uh, the glo uh, what do you call it, the globe? What do they think of them there? What was the globe called? Pendulum? Hmm? Pendulum? Pendulum? Crystal ball. Crystal ball. Okay. A crystal ball, look at your hands, all this type of stuff. You go downtown, you'll see the stores all over. They make a living, these, these gypsies. Obviously, they're not starving, and they have to rent the store. What does it cost them money? So obviously, people are paying the money to, to, to do these things. Why are they doing it? I need a little extra help. I'm going in for a big deal. I want to know if I'm going to be successful. I have to go to them, and I pay them. And they tell me you're going to be successful. Go, oh, wonderful. Did you ever see a lousy a Chinese, uh, whatever they call it, uh, fortune your Chinese cookie. cookies? Fortune cookies. Fortune cookies. You ever see uh, a bad fortune? Okay, so I'm saying the same thing here. You never have anything that's bad. They learn from you what you want, and, they, and they're able to tell it. And it sounds like right, and then, then there's big knowledge that comes with us with it. And that's uh, why they can fool you and, and, they can, and take your advantage of you. But the idea is, I'm looking for the future. I'm looking to figure out how am I not going to get into the trouble that God wants me to get into. So Rashi says, in the end, the pussy ends, and there's a sifra over here that reads this way. Im tomimato. If you are Tomim, then in Hashem Lukech, then you belong to God. So the, the, the uh, Malbum tries to try and translate it to me that if I rely on God, that's, that's the way I rely, on God. Then Tomim Ti Hashem Lukech, then God will give you Ashkoch HaProtis. That all the rules of the world all the knowledge, all the, all the, you know, the odds are you're posting this season comes back, uh, whatever it is there, uh, or you'll, you'll be dead in 20 years. But all these things are meaningless because I have Hashkoch HaPratis. And all the things, these, what you told me has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with Klav Yisroel. And that's one of the big titles I have on, on, on different Chochmas. Uh, I mean, What we learn in school is the world. We don't learn Jews. Okay, now, Rashi says a very clear thing over on Tom Tia Shem Lekecha. His halachimai betmimus, go with him with tmimus, with the tzapeloi and hope to him, leitachagach ha-asidus, don't worry about the future. Don't try to figure it out. Whatever happens to you, and then you become one of his. In other words, God, I know that when you give me something, it's not something because I'm one of, I'm a guy coming from Eastern Europe, and what do you call it? He gave me a machla. He gave me a machla because you have a tiny to me. You have a tiny to me, okay, so that's me and you, Rabbi Yishalim. I'm going to do tshuva. I don't know what exactly you want. I'll try to figure it out, and I'm going to do tshuva on it. But I know it's you that's giving it to me. It's not happening to me by itself. That's then you're one of his. If you go in and say, you know, Rabbi Yishalim, you know, they told me I'm, I'm going to die because I'm, I'm part of the 80% of what he called there, so the rave is the Misa, and therefore I'm praying to you. What are you praying to me for? You're part of 80%, so you're gonna die. 80% wants. I believe it's me that's doing it, and then you can pray to me. If he's helping me, it happens by itself, so what do you want from me? 
That's to put the Bain Shu's money for us. The Ramban tells it even stronger on this Posik. He says, well, he talks about this, all these things with their Chachmas. Also, we'll have to talk about that in a minute anyway. So he says, you, if they tell you that this and this is going to happen to you, you're supposed to say no. And that's a mitzvah I say. If you don't believe that, then you're not you have become a mitzvah I say. It doesn't apply to me. It doesn't make whatever you're telling me doesn't make a difference. It's not going to me. Me and God are two different chashbenists. And I'm not, I'm not part of the world. I'm, I'm a hashkoch apotis. He wants to get me, he'll get me. Then I'm, then I'm not saying that he won't get me. And he may get me with the way the Derech Oilub is, that, that, that he may do. Abel Amaisa, it's because of personal kindness to me that he has to do And I have to solve that problem with him. And therefore, then I can deal with God. And that's the way, that's the Ikeo, what all the Rishayim say, and so on. Now, the Kashi becomes... Why is it that I threw them out? He said, because they did all these type of things. I said, because God gave them over to the day he inherited, he gave them over, gave you the inheritance from them. Why? They didn't do anything wrong. It's only Zayn Mitzvah B'nai Noyach. So the law be showing them, they don't want to tie that, obviously, you see, there's more Zayn Mitzvah B'nai Noyach, okay? But Chayre, we our kabbal is nine mitzvahs when you know yach, and Chayre these are not the nine mitzvahs. The guy going to be it's not one of the nine mitzvahs. He said it's, it has nothing to do with being one of the nine mitzvahs. What we're dealing here is with people living in El Tzisoyel near Hakodesh Baruch Hu. They all be with them. the the Beis Hamikdash was Kodesh from from other Mauritians time. This, so this is the place. This is it. You're living where God's Shechina is, whatever that means. Why do you go to look for future things when you can go to the Rebbein Shalom himself? He's right here. Go to Ha'am Maria. He's right there. You can talk to him himself. Why are you guys you go, you're doing these things and doing magic to figure out what's the future it's going to hold for me? You don't belong here then. That's the point. I'm kicking you out because you don't belong here. Not because you did evil, you did an Aveda. There's no Aveda. Oh, but you don't belong here. Here you're supposed to trust in God in this area. You can't just go and say, oh, I want to see what the, what the magicians say, whatever these things are, and, then, and that, that doesn't work. Is that because Goyim and Ertisrol have a Shoch Pratis, or it's a time on them that they didn't, they didn't have a Shoch Pratis? Oh, but the Mary said they should have realized there's a Rabbein Shalim. And then? And then, and, and the yeah. Shalim, they have to treat him, get rid of the smart wall together, whatever they'll do. Or the, they, they would tr- do it, but they would deal with the Rabbein Shalim, not to try to figure out how they personally will get out of it. Uh-huh. Now, the Rashiva holds this as a very important the Yisoyed, that we don't look for the future. And he goes, Rashi, that whatever happens, that's what we're supposed to accept upon ourselves. And obviously, how to live with it. We, 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 we definitely can pray and do truva and everything else to get rid of it. About there's ways of living with certain things. But the Pusik is a very fuzzy Pusik. He says, why, why are you, these guys go to good, all the magicians? They go to magicians. But you, you can't do that. Why? Because God gave you a Novi. And if you have a problem, you have to know, wherever you have to know something, that you can go to the Novi, go to the Novi. Let me ask you the Novi now. Well, no Novi anymore. Is there a Nurum Vitumim? No Nurum Vitumim anymore. Well, she says Nurum Vitumim also. There's no Nurum Vitumim anymore. So what's the time on me? So I gotta go to a magician. How else am I gonna know what the future is? So I say there's two different laws here. Until Hamishi, that's talking about the private person. A private person, 
you follow the Torah. There's no laws for you special. There's no Navi for you. There's no, what do you call it? You're a private person. You follow the Torah. Torah tells you there's something wrong. It must be that you didn't have Eva. Go find out what you did. Do tshuva, go away. Finished. In God's hands. After Hamishi, we're talking about Klal Yisrael. Now, Klal Yisrael has things to do which are against the Torah. Give you a mention, Moshe. What's against the Torah? You can't put yourself in danger, right? So how you become a soldier? You can't put yourself in danger, right? And obviously we had soldiers. Because the Rebbein Yishim told us that sometimes I want you to attack what you call the, not a preemptive war, talking about a war where you go counter to get property, get uh, to enlarge out your soil. For whatever reasons, you go to war. It's like, the world goes to war. What does the world go to war for? He has resources. I don't have the resources. I want them, so I'm going to fight him for it. That's all. That you can only do if you have a Navi or a Umbatumi. Shira said because of that, in Mayus Cheney, you don't find any wars except the war against Edom. When, they, when the Hashemunoyim brought in Antipeta, Antipeta and Hudas and all these guys, that they brought them in when they defeated Eden. And he said it must be that at that time that was considered a preemptive war. What is a preemptive war? If anyone uh, remembers the 67 war, that was a preemptive war. In other words, El Chisol admits they fired the first shot. The reason they fired the first shot is because they were completely surrounded and they were coming. And right now, it's quiet. We're able to get away. And when if we, if we attack now, when we're able to wipe out their air force and everything else, which is exactly what they did, then of course, then we win the war. That's called a preemptive war. I didn't call it that. <coughs> preemptive war is really defensive war. Defensive wars we're entitled to. Now, if you want to take something away from me, I can fight you for it. That there's no question about it. So preemptive wars are very important that we could fight it. But in time of Hashem Noim, the only preemptive war we had was really against the Greeks and so on. And those were the preemptive wars. So we fought them, we defeated them, and whatever it is there. But afterwards, we find one war that they did attack, and we gained, and, and, and we captured people from it, and this and that, which was really the end of Kali Yisrael because of it, in the thing there. But that's what we did. That was because we, we obviously decided by the Chachomim, or someone, that this war was a necessary war. It was not, it's not at one point of just capturing people or, or territory. And that's why I hold that that's what the passion divides itself in those two things. The Taylor then goes back again to Ali Miklut. I just want to explain one thing in Ali Miklut. It says, and Yeah, why? What happens? He says, guy killed by accident, right? And uh, we shouldn't, uh, the, <coughs> um, what do you call it? The girl Adam shouldn't get him because he'll kill him. And this, the, the murderer did not deserve death. He didn't hate him for yesterday and the day before. And the Gemara says, what's the sign of it, Moshilshin? That's a guy you don't say hello to because you're angry at him for three days. Um, let me ask you, somebody you don't talk to for three days, you want to kill him? Right? 
So then what do you mean by this? Shadows, I think this is about the best. We're talking about carelessness here. We are not talking about murder. The halacha of murder is being careless. That's that's murder. And we have to understand that, and that's why the Torah keeps hacking again and hacking again and hacking again, that if you kill someone by accident, it's not an accident. You were careless, and you were tzayach b'shoyei. A guy is chayiv misa for it. You are a roitzeach b'shoyge. You just don't know the halacha. What is the halacha? The halacha is you can't be careless. Okay. So what does careless have to do with the, if I say a or not? I'm chopping wood. That's the case that's given in the forest. And uh, my, my axe handle is 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 loose falls off sometimes so normally you have somebody watching you know if if somebody comes tell me so i won't be uh won't bang they tell me the guy you haven't spoken to for three days he's coming let him worry about himself what do i have to worry about i'm not to kill him let him worry about himself Let's see that this is why everybody does this, right? Um, when you had babies, little kids, you baby-proofed your house, right? You bought a certain type of furniture, no, but not pointy, more round. You put little plugs in the electric hole, uh, electric uh, plugs over there. The kids can't get their finger in there or something else in there. And you really did a good job, right? Baruch Hashem, the kids grew up and they're out of their house and they're big or in their house. I can take these plugs out of the things there. Why? Because every time I, I had to put in a plug that I wanted to attach something, I had to make sure I had nails that I can wear this plastic thing and pull them out. But I bite my nails and I don't have any nails, so how am I supposed to do it? Right? And take a knife and put it over there and we'll have an explosion. So I, so I don't want to bother with all these things anymore. So now my friend is bringing his kids over, his little babies over. Do I go say, quick, 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 let's get some of these plastic things <coughs> to come in? Or we tell them, let's watch your own kids. You come into my house, you watch your own kids, kid. And that's what it is, that you watch yourself. No, the idea is when it comes to care, that's not carelessness, that's a, you know the situation. But when it comes to carelessness, I can't say it's your responsibility to watch yourself. My responsibility is not to hurt you. And it's best for Dafka not to kill you for sure. We have the Indian of uh, Aden Zaymim. Now, the way we normally picture Adam Zemim is that they're a bunch of goyim, a bunch of gangsters, that they're willing to say false witness against somebody, what do you call it? But I want to give you another scenario, maybe. There's a dope dealer outside the yeshiva, and we can't catch him. No matter what we do, he's always ahead of us. Every time we call the cops, he's clean. So I know he's adopted. <laughs> Good question. But we're assuming that we know. Right? He tried to sell me, or he sold me. So I know he's adopted. He's killing our kids. We have a good yeshiva here. But they will be becoming dope addicts. We gotta get rid of this guy. How are we gonna get rid of him? We can't catch him. You know, there are other laws in the title besides dope dealing. I don't even know what that law is exactly on dope dealing, but there isn't there. Let's say he was Machal Shabbos. Two of us are coming to say, hey, this is Machal Shabbos. We'll kill him. Then we get rid of him. Shem Shemayim, we're doing this. 
right? So the din is, there's no Shem Shemayim here. You can do all you want, but you're not allowed to say false witness. You can't be the AIDS amen. Thing there. Now, why, what will happen? I said, you got to pray to God or do something to, to counteract somehow this, this, this dope addict. But you can't go along and say, we're going to do this. You can't do this. Many of us are evil on this thing. What do you mean you're evil on it? I don't see false witness about anybody, anything. If I ask you about a Hersha, well, that's no good. You know it's no good. How do you know it's no good? Did you ever see any of the inspections that they do? Have you saw any of his ashkoches? Do you know it's no good? <coughs> All of us, the word in the yeshiva is that we don't use this word. Now, why don't we use it? Not because it's no good. I have no idea if it's no good. But we never checked it out. We never heard any good things about it. Or we heard things that maybe we should be weary of or whatever it is. It. I don't start up with a new thing. Shash is muta by Loshin What's shash mean? Meaning, look, I got to move into a new town. And I asked somebody, where do you buy meat? And I'll tell you, well, there's two butcher shops here, but everybody buys Albany, buy a potato, buy from this guy, not from this guy. Oh, so why didn't you go, you did uh, the macabre blush and all that? The other guy's no good? I didn't say, I don't know if the other guy's no good, but why should I buy from a guy that no one says he's good? And I don't know, I have no way of expecting, when I have to buy from a guy that everybody says he's good. So why do I need the headache of checking into it myself? So if you tell me, Hersher A is good, Hersher B is good, Hersher C, we don't use. Now, we don't use, why? Because it's no good? Well, because I don't know. I don't know, so therefore I don't know. Unfortunately, what do we say? And someone will ask me about a certain Hersher, right? Treif. How do you know it's treif? You don't know. You're passing up a din because you don't know anything about it. It's a couple of shemot. And he became an eitzoyim, really. And he goes, you say, gay, this guy's treif. And you don't even know. Okay. That's something that we got to be careful about now with Macabre. And to say, always, oh, I don't know. I can't tell you anything about the guy. I don't know anything about him. And I, go, I don't use them. It has nothing to do with it. Be the finest person in the world. I have no idea. Okay, the Indian of going to war and not being afraid. It's a very strange thing. But you see, we're called the rebel yell. What was the rebel yell when in, in the uh, Civil War? When the, when the Southerners attacked, <coughs> Confederates attacked, was with a gishrei, a yell. The yell scares you. Indians attack, they yell, they scare you. They bring down, they bring four types of noises that they used to make to scare you. I have no idea what's going on, I don't understand. You're not supposed to be afraid. You're supposed to go in. And that's, I got to go against my emotions, and that's the hard thing to do, because that's what I got to do. Why? But how can I do it? How do I go against my emotions? I tell you, I'm in God's hands. I'm always in God's hands. He always is around protecting me. And the fact that I'm in war, I'm surrounded by many enemies, doesn't make me less in God's hands than I was before. Now, I'll tell you a story that, that uh, I saw a clip of this thing. I don't know what Pisa recently, when I say recently, it could be the last 10 years or something. But I believe it had to do with the 67 war. I'm not 100% sure. It was on the Golan Heights. It could have been with the, uh, the Yom Kippur war. 
but I don't know what such an army is, such as that. The Yidden, the fire, what do you call it, the Israelis took the Golan Heights, part of Syria originally, right? And they kept it. Syria, they had about 100 tanks, and they, they held the position. Syria made a counterattack with over 1,000 tanks. Now, if you see a thousand tanks coming at you, and you're one guy good, there's a hundred of us. Well, first of all, I don't even know that there's a hundred of us. Right now, I'm alone, and I see there's a thousand guys coming down on me. My, my, my tendency is I'm getting out of here, right? And they held their ground. And, of course, the nation that were made was that the Israelis, the hundred, every time they shot, they had a tank. So I don't know if they shot 10, 10 times and they got a thousand tanks, I don't know. But the Arab tanks missed. And this is Bietzim. It seems uh, I heard from Gershon once that he said he heard that uh, there was a, or read an article from an Arab uh, general from the, when they were doing either the Scud War well, in the first uh, Gulf War, when they sent Scots against Israel, or other times when they have all these rockets that come into Israel, how many people get killed by the Israelis? Very rare that yes, someone got killed. Why is that? They're aiming at you. Why are you no one's killing you? Good, they sell 4,000, which is a good reason for us to go shoot them back down. All this is right. But, but why didn't they hit with the 4,000 shots that they shot? So a guy said to someone, he said, if he was such bad uh, aimers, he, he, all, all, the, all, the, all the weapons we use are calibrated like anybody else's weapons. You want to hit that, that, that house over there? You put this down to wherever it is there, and you shoot it, and you hit it, and it bangs it out down. What's your shayla? And we miss. Why do we miss? Because God's with you. That's why we miss. And that's the point over here also. God is with us. Hey, well, they, they don't get us. They miss. The end of the settler is there's only got a couple of minutes left. <clears throat> Talking about the union, you're finding uh, a dead person. And there's a whole ceremony about it. The idea of, again, our responsibility to our, to our, to call your soil. And the thing, that shot is anybody that comes, anybody that comes, we take care of them feed him, take care of him, we we'll love him, make sure that he's, he's out of danger before we say, we say goodbye to him. These are the things that Klai Yisrael does. And if you find a dead person, that means Klai Yisrael has to claim we are innocent. We didn't do it. What happened, it happened, but we didn't do it. That's the point of the whole thing. You have such a responsibility of, of towards your, your, your fellow Jew, that there's no such thing as saying that you can guy can die if he visited you. You you took care of everything that he needed. It's impossible that he died. If he died, you have to say, Taki, I can't understand it. Or he didn't come to me. We didn't kill this person. And this is called we did kill. We didn't take care of him. We didn't give him what he needed. When he needed it, we killed him. That's the important part that you have to realize. We did kill him. And that's the part that they're not supposed to do. And, uh, yes, that's the key. Anyway, you have a good Shabbos. And we should be, we should hope to be continuing this. Okay.